12 right now, still in the 60s across central Indiana. A new biography is providing a deeper look at Vice President Mike Pence and his political journey. It is called Piety and Power, Mike Pence and the Taking of the White House. Tom Lobianco wrote it. He's a journalist who's written about Pence for several years for the Indianapolis Star and the Associated Press, both here in Indiana and in Washington, D.C. Now he's on a, on a book tour for as long as this lasts, and it may last quite a while considering the headlines that are in the news uh, right now. Tom, thanks for being with us today. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Uh, let, let's get into what's happening in the moment through the yes. reporting you've done uh, about Mike Pence over the years and the preparation you did talking to a uh, hundred people uh, yes. that are close to him. What would you anticipate Mike Pence is doing right now with the Trump administration in this crisis? Where he is right now is walking a tightrope. So you have to, one, everything is about survival for him. And, and politically, ever, based on everything I understand, they're looking forward to 2024. That's their best shot at winning the White House in their own right. And then talking about Mike and Karen Pence here, kind of a joint political team. And you, throughout the book, you make clear how close that partnership is. Incredibly close. So the other part of this, though, is being unflinchingly loyal to Trump. Mm -hmm. So this is this the Ukraine thing puts him in a very different place than he was during the Trump Russia investigation. Remember, during Trump Russia, he wasn't really wrapped into anything. The focus was more on people from the campaign, Paul Manafort, Michael Flynn. He only got out. He only got exposed just a little bit, and that was that during that um, phone call with uh, Flynn and uh, regarding uh, what Flynn and Sergey Kislyak had talked about. Right. But here, we know that he met with the Ukrainian President Zelenko, uh, Zelensky, and he talked about, uh, he took questions on this at the beginning of the month. And the question was, did he talk about Joe Biden? Mm -hmm. The first answer, no. Okay, what did you talk about? We talked about corruption efforts. So he could be exposed in a way that he seriously wasn't during the Trump-Russia investigation. I thought it was interesting that if we had forgotten any of that, the president reminded us of that during a U.N. news conference. That's right. That's right. Yeah, when he said that, he was kind of throwing his arms around Pence. A lot, the initial reaction, a lot of people thought they were, he was throwing uh, Pence under the bus. Right. Uh, look, what I know from behind the scenes is inside the, inside the White House and among Trump's advisors is that Jared and Ivanka have floated replacing Mike Pence. Now, now their people deny this flatly. Uh, the president himself will occasionally ask what different pe different people what they think of Pence. Mm. Uh, I spoke with one advisor from the 2016 campaign, and he had a very salient read on this. He said that when Trump's asking you about somebody like a Chris Christie, Giuliani, somebody at the top level in mm -hmm. his world, he's not exactly. He might be asking you about them because of them. He also might be asking about them because of you. It could be a test to see if you have the loyalty to the person that he's appointed as his lieutenant. Exactly. To that end, as this grows closer to whatever the end is, whether this fizzles out or this is the powder keg that the president's most ardent critics uh, anticipate that it could be, do you see Pence drawing closer to Trump or pulling away? That's a great question. And this is the dance that he does. He needs to protect himself in certain cases. Uh, we saw this strategy a little bit during Trump Russia, where they would they would kind of hide a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, they would they would veer away from us. Uh, when he was out here uh, in Indy a couple days ago, uh, the press was shouting questions at him uh, about Ukraine. He declined to answer them. You know what it reminded me of? It reminded me of um, the Access Hollywood weekend back in yes. uh, October of 2016, where he went very much off the radar during all that. Exactly. That's kind of what this felt like. Um, he has to he has to remain close to Trump, regardless of Ukraine, no Ukraine, whatever. He has to remain there anyway because that's his political future. Because and Mike Pence still wants to be president in your estimation. Absolutely. Yeah. It, and this ha this is he has to have that base of voters. That's where the Republican Party base is right now. And if he is seen in any way trying to push Trump off the cliff, uh, stick the knife in politically, whatever, and in some you know Machiavellian effort to you know get him impeached, removed, take the presidency that way, that base abandons him, and they don't want they don't want the presidency with an asterisk. They don't want to be Gerald Ford. They want to you know win in their own right. I, as I read the book, it struck me that you entered a very crowded field. There are other Mike Pence books out there. For the Indiana reader, they'll recognize a lot of the faces and names. You, Bosma and Klipsch mm -hmm. and Kittle and uh, and Hilbert yes. plays a big role in this. I thought it was interesting that there were so many non-Beltway stories that won't mean anything to the insiders, but they might mean the world to the people that are reading this, watching at home. Let me tell you a great story 
Uh, Please do. A lot of my sources kept on telling me to go talk with Stephen Hilbert mm -hmm. to understand how Pence got on the ticket. And I thought to myself, I mean, you, we've been around here, but what would Hilbert have anything to do with Mike Pence? And the answer goes back to the 1996 gridiron dinner where Donald Trump and Marla Maple, well, Donald Trump are there, they're both there, and mm -hmm. Trump is getting roasted. It's when they're building the casinos, they've okay. done the expansion. Hilbert and Trump are incredibly close. And Hilbert was still very influential at the time. This was yes. before his fall. Yes. 2016 rolls around. The Trump campaign is actually closer with Hilbert, starting from when they bring on Paul Manafort and Rick Gates in March of 2016, closer with Hilbert than they are with Pence. And my sources told me that when they did that July 12th fundraiser, this famous fundraiser where the Trump campaign comes in, the, pops the tire, breaks down, mm -hmm. the, changes history, basically, that fundraiser had been planned months and before. It wasn't about some courtship of Mike Pence. It was before Mike Pence was even seriously on the radar. And it was because Hilbert put it together. The quirks of fate right? and timing. Um, the book is Piety and Power, Mike Pence and the Taking of the White House. Tom Lobianco wrote it. Um, a perfect time for you. I will say after reading it, it is neither a hit job nor is it a fawning piece. And that may, in the conversations we have as reporters, may irritate both sides. And, and maybe that's the goal in the end of all of this? I think the goal is we have enough space to put out enough information my, if, look, if I read it, se separate from the, my own reporting, if I read it, I might come away with a different conclusion than you come away with. Mm. And I hope that's the best that we can do, right, is it, the, the Enlightenment philosophy of putting that information out there and let people make their own decisions. So I hope, I hope this accomplishes that. A reporter reporting. Randy, it is time for a meteorologist to do some forecasting. Fascinating interview there, guys. I, you can go 